Uh, trying to get it. To, oh, wait. I'm tapping my phone screen to get that to focus. Uh, that's probably the dumbest thing I've ever done in <laughs> my entire life. All right. Well, welcome back to the. Is it focus? <laughs> Uh, well, this is the fourth uh, episode of the Tipped Out Podcast with Brandon Palmer and Danny Christie as your hosts. What's up? Welcome back. We are a little disheveled, or is that the word distraught, disheveled, disoriented? Um, yeah. Just hopping right back into it, brother. So what's good? Let's talk about your Instagram real quick. You started a golf Instructional Instagram, correct? Indeed. Danny Christie Golf, Instagram, TikTok. Go give it a follow. Um, yeah, man, it's been, I mean, obviously, kind of the idea was brought to me by you. You've been doing your thing for a while now. And it's nice to finally actually get it off the ground going and do my own thing. Um, I've been thinking about it for a while. As you know, we've talked about it. But feels good it's exciting to put out content and then it's cool to see what people say back and then that people actually enjoy it and it's actually helping people which is the ultimate goal but it's a pretty pretty cool way to just make a name and an image for yourself yeah it doesn't matter whether you have 20 followers or 2,000 or you know 26,000 it's uh it feels really good when someone either saves your piece of content or reaches mm -hmm. out or just you know, is happy with what you've said to them or helped them with. So that's, that's the end all goal for us, I think, is truly to help people and do it through the game we love. So that's cool. But uh, for any of the listeners wondering kind of how um, it's been going for you or how you kind of gained a quick following, you know, speak on that a little bit. Because I know you now you, you started the page, what, how many, three, four days ago? I started the Instagram like five days ago and I'm up to like 55 followers. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, yeah, I mean, I'll take that for sure. Um, most of the knowledge has come from you, Frank, or just watching YouTube videos on gaining a following. But I think, honestly, if you look, I mean, there's all the talk of like the algorithms and all that stuff. But I think the biggest thing is just make quality content. As I mean, don't I wouldn't get all caught up in all that those like hacks for getting followers or stuff like that um if you make content that people like which hopefully you find out quick what they like what they don't like um you can get a quick following I think um the other big thing has just been working within the community on Instagram so searching hashtags related to our field commenting on posts and just actually talking to real people yeah. about what's going on. And then from there, it's actually crazy how many people want to get better at golf, don't know that much in golf, want to know more. Yeah. And from there, it's pretty easy once you start making those connections and then they recommend you to one of their friends and they talk to people on Instagram, it can grow pretty quickly. Yeah, that's awesome. That's cool. And we'll, we'll use that as a little segue to get into – Kind of what we're doing so right now like this morning i just filmed a bunch of videos for like at home golf instruction or at home golf improvement uh yep. or so but the thing as a consumer consuming or you know practicing at home golf we have to realize that um you know we have to even be that much more focused or aware of possibly what we're doing as if we're not hitting balls and seeing ball flight and actually getting some, you know, results from what we're doing, you know, making dry swings or slow motion swings. Mm -hmm. uh, we just have to make sure it's done right. So the series we'll be doing, or not even a series, really the content we'll be putting out is going to help, uh, you know, the average golfer, whether it be, high handicap or even a, you know, a low handicap competitive golfer while at home. It's going to be drills that are really geared towards the movements and things that aren't going to produce kind of like differences, you know, like if you're, if you slice the ball, it's kind of tough to really outwork a slice indoors at home, no ball flight and stuff like that. There's certainly 
things you can do, uh, but we just have to be cautious on, you know, what we're consuming or what we're taking in, thinking it's oh. us, you know. Totally. And, and to touch on that, with these, any change you make or any time you try to improve, it's not, you can't do it at full speed. So whatever sport, I mean, the easiest way to compare to sports, I mean, I'm sure there's some for hockey, but the best way for me to compare it is basketball. When you start out playing basketball and they're teaching you how to shoot, they give you the ball, you put it in your dominant hand and you just shoot one handed. Mm -hmm. Right. And then from there you step back, maybe throw a second hand on and then you're mm -hmm. back, you're like full body, you're jumping it while you shoot. I mean, as basic as that sounds, that's essentially the same thing you have to do with golf. You can't just be like, oh, I'm over the top. I'm just going to try to be more inside with my full swing. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. You have to incorporate the little movements, improve from your, your connection to the ground up or, you know, your, your arm action. And it all ties in together, but you kind of have to isolate certain segments, I think, and perform drills at slower speeds. Mm -hmm. and slowly develop the feel and work it into your swing, which is kind of hopefully what most of these drills that we do at home target. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, just slow progressions. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day type of thing. We got to really work on certain patterns and be consistent with it. And that even goes back to, you know, the Instagram thing. It's like you said, you want quality content, but it's consistent quality content. And that's, you know, in my opinion, that's one of the main reasons I haven't amassed a larger following is it's because I go inactive, like, for weeks almost at a time because of just being too caught up in maybe what I'm posting. You know, I don't, I don't have the perfect yeah. backdrop in my, in my apartment at, up in Delhi. You know, it, oh, it's snowing. Oh, I'm, I'm too lazy to go to the courts. You know, those are the things that separate – the Frank Garganos of the world, you know, the people that are gaining this great following through their quality, quality content and just consistency. So same thing goes, whether you're trying to build an Instagram or build yourself as a golfer, consistency over time is going to really get some good results. Oh, I think I got something good to talk about. So I saw a post the other day that was like the real fundamentals of golf. Hmm. And it was um, low point control, direction control, and distance control. Or like you have to be able to hit it far enough to succeed on the golf course you're playing. Which is pretty interesting. It was like it's like it's almost like the ball flight laws of the golf swing. It's kind of what I was thinking of it as. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're like everybody. It's just weird, which is weird to think about because then the ball flight laws then apply to the swing, but like. I mean, it's kind of like the same thing. Like, yeah, a lot of players swing the club different, of course, but good players are square at impact, you know, type of thing, where it's like yeah. certain concrete rules of the game that if you do these certain checkpoints or these certain things, then you're going to either play well or hit it well, however you want to say it. Um, I know that's cool. So it was what, distance control? Direction control and what? And low point control. But low point control is number one. That's huge, though. And, I mean, if you think – I don't think enough people talk about that. Right. Really. I mean, how many how many people do you see that catch the ball in first like you're supposed to? And that, You know what I mean? Like, so – like, every – almost everybody that's an amateur that you play with, like any old random person you go play with at the golf course is your average golfer. If you watch their low point, it's not consistent. They kind of behind it a little bit, thin it a little bit, yep. like bounce the club into it a little bit. No, it's so true. Yeah, it's either heavy, thin, one pure, one out of 20. You know, it's uh, yeah. that's huge. And it goes into whether it's full swing or chipping, like we've talked about many times in our advanced teaching class, and we've practiced it. And, you know, our professor Jim Lees has showed us, like, that's it's so crucial to one you know hitting a shot with a little bit of check on it at least you know mm -hmm. having the ball roll up that face uh whether it's putting you know low through impact uh you know have it almost follow it to the cup uh really everything is you know it's target based even though we're staring at that little white ball it's still subconsciously target based 
and we have to get that club going low and through to the target. That's, that's huge. One of my main things is when I'm hitting it poorly, it's, as you know, I'm, I usually swing pretty rappy around my body. You know, I, I exit low left. Um, and then depending on how I'm gripping it, whether it's strong or neutral that day, uh, it can go very left of left, or we have to stack those hands. And now we're hitting like a, like a pull cut uh, to save it. So yeah, that's, that's huge. That is a, uh, that's interesting for sure. So what's one of the – What's that? Go, no, go ahead. Oh, I, I mean – and then I feel like it just comes down to learning how to control low point, mm -hmm. which is probably one of the – also one of the hardest things to do. I mean, I haven't, I probably didn't feel that I was that good of a ball striker and controlled the low point that well. Some days I still don't feel that good about it. But until like my freshman, sophomore year of college is when I really started to be like, oh, I'm hitting it crisp a lot. You know what I mean? Yep. I feel like I went through a lot of junior golf being like, yeah, this one might be fat. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah, this, this might be a little chunky. Like, <laughs> I never realized that. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's just, of course, getting better in progressions in the game and mm -hmm. uh, repetition. But, yeah, that's that's so funny. I've never, until you just said that, I never realized it. Like, it, it goes in spurts maybe, too. Like, we'll, we'll have bad days, of course, yeah. or just weird range sessions. But, yeah, I was thinking about my – rain session the other day where I, I think I called you after and just said I was hitting it good and yeah bro like there's not I didn't like miss hit really you know I guess that yeah. also goes into like taking time and routine you know you're not just raking balls and I, I step behind every time I think about what I'm doing target go through the motions and then hit whereas like when you're just trying to get reps in or you're just not thinking and you're just pulling ball after ball, you know, not even changing your setup or alignment, but yeah, man, just thought organization plays into a lot of things, man. If you organize your thoughts or your actions or your day, uh, things start to kind of align a little bit easier and just work out better once you start to think about it before you do it, whether it's, you know, golf or just planning out your daily routine. So. That's cool. Have a plan of attack for anything you do. No doubt. Successful people know exactly, probably, I'd imagine they know exactly what they're doing every day or something. Like, they have a plan. They wake up early, eat breakfast, probably. <laughs> Scratch. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I'm not a successful person. So I don't know. Um, that's, I mean, that's, I feel like any documentary you watch, man. No, they, got Bill, they got Bill Gates up there, and it's like, this, this, this. Yeah. No, oh I, I told you, I've been doing research on that, like looking at all the best morning routines of successful people uh, in business. Uh, you know, I haven't looked into the golf industry of that. I don't really know if there's much of that out there, but you know, just in business, you see all that, like you said, the successful people and what they do, you know, the times they wake up, what they do once they wake up, you know, so I'm, I'm noticing uh, fitness early, you know, doing something for you, you know, really getting up, whether it's go for a run or workout, you know, stretch, uh, a lot of meditation, you know, affirmations. So like writing down goals and, you know, realizing where you see yourself, whether it be in a week, a month, a year, 10 years, uh, that's, that's massive. You know, the third person visualization, you know, like almost like you're looking down on yourself you know, holding that trophy in that golf tournament, you know, and like out of body experience. Yeah, no, that, that's <laughs> big, but yeah, you know, the little, out of body experience, the little wins, man, you know, wake up, make your bed. You know, that's your first, that's your first win after getting up. That's, that's your, first I don't win. know, man, make your beds kind of seems like a waste of time to me. No, I do not at all. It makes you feel good. Like being clean or organized is supposed to like produce a, a decent amount of melatonin so oh not melatonin dopamine my bad melatonin is fucking sleep but um yeah so like before i go to sleep bro i love to like organize my room and stuff just make sure things are good you know kind of that's so nah dude I, I gotta be i don't know that's the difference that's the difference between you and i in the words of douglas galati <laughs> that's a waste of time that's a waste of time. I don't think he actually said that, but I also like how he talks about Galati's always like, why do people always want to be early to things? It's like, that's just wasting time. 
15 minutes early, I could have done something else with my 15 minutes and just sit there and wait. That's true. Depends what it is, though. Uh, I like fishing. What's that? You like to go fish. Why did you ask that? I don't know. I saw this bird on uh, my stand over there. It's a seagull. It's not a seagull. It's not real, and it just made me think of a fish. Because, you know, dude, you know how my mom is, bro. She loves, like, the ocean and beach. So, like, everything, every piece of canvas around my house is, like, beachy and stuff. Because we live in Florida now. Yeah, that makes sense, man. So, do you like fishing? Uh, I do. I don't really ever go, though. You know what I mean? Like, something I would like to probably do. Do more. I don't know. Like once I'm willing to touch fish, which in probably a couple of years I'll be able to do that. Grow out of that fear. When you're older and more mature. <laughs> what is it? The consistency, like the sliminess? Uh yeah, man. I feel like I feel like you get like a coating on your hands when you touch them. Yeah, bro. It's oily, bro. They gotta be. Think about it. Going in water. If if we if we lived in H2O, bro, we'd probably have to be. I mean, I'm oily enough. I don't need to be. Kid, I'm already drowning in it. <laughs> I, could, I, could live underwater. I could live underwater. Did you see? I mean, you're you're connected to my account. Did you see the uh, uh, what that the girls swing from Arizona the other day that I I reviewed? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so I just decoded the swing, bro. So what what's going on there is just getting real kind of lifty with the hands. That trail knee extends and straightens a little too much, so now it changes the, the hip level, so it yeah. fits, it's kind of wonky. And then coming down, it's a slight over-the-top move, but just a little bit inside, keep that foot down, a little tone less early extension. I think it'd be golden. So I feel like for me, probably the first thing I'd do with that is, yeah, try to fight the early extension. Mm-hmm. It's just like – This comes from getting full work down and understanding where to put your body. Yeah. It's just – it was a good – it's not bad. Like, she's really getting up off her toes, but it's just like – just early. Yeah, I mean, it really is kind of crazy, too, how many people early extend. Well, when you think about it, I mean, it makes, like – makes sense, bro. Golf is so weird. Like, we stand – I know, bro. It freaking show all the presents I got hidden. Um, but yeah, I mean we're standing like parallel to the ball. Yeah. Target is that way. Like it's just a very weird thing. Like our body wants to go towards that the ball. Yeah. It's just. And do you think that's what it is? Innate, like. Because I feel like it's almost a natural move, the amount of people that do it. I mean, think about it. You just did that whole video on, like, balance. And, you know, like, if it's on your heels, you know, you're taking it way outside. If it's on your toes, you're taking it inside. Like, I think it's kind of the same thing. People use – people that are, like, the weekend warriors of golf or even, like, us that aren't stretching as much as we should or doing certain things. Like, think about how much we sit, whether we're at school, we're playing yeah. games, you go to work, like – so certain muscles are tight now, so now you have to use other ones. And now certain muscles are stronger than others because, you know, if you do work out, a lot of people do the, you know, the mirror muscles, the beach muscles. So it's, it's the arms, it's the chest, you know, legs aren't worked as much, you know, hip flexor mobility isn't worked as much, like yeah. thoracic extension and, you know, the twisting of the spine aren't like focused on enough. So now we get a golfer that's tight, rigid, doesn't play a lot, and maybe doesn't know, you know, the biomechanics of the body enough. Like, yeah, bro, they're just going to come over the top, hit it with the chest. They're going to move those hips in because everything's tight. Like, they have yeah. a lot of tension in their glutes. You know, it's not – they're not transferring that momentum from foot to foot and through. It's literally like I'm here and they just come out of it. I mean, that's really what it is. You're losing posture. It can be, of course, from setup. I mean, there's so many different reasons why. Oh. Really thin, but I think Warrior Ano is the right track of yeah. fitness and anatomy type things. Because I feel like I think that's probably the most common reason. I wouldn't even say I don't even think I would say early extension is a natural move. Maybe, uh -huh. 
but it, it's become natural based off of how we live essentially you know what i mean like because not that many people keep like no, almost no one probably like a very 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 small percentage of people probably keep their body in the shape that it should be in i guess or even if you were to compare it to the tour pro you know i was listening to one of my favorite podcasts of the 18 strong podcast which is just like a great have you ever listened to that no it's wicked uh, oh. jeff pelazero uh, forgive me if i said his last name wrong but yeah he gets along a lot of good guys in golf fitness industry uh guys and girls excuse me but uh you know he talked about i just lost my train of thought oh like what is the what do you think like one of the biggest differences is or are between are between the average golfer and like a PGA Tour pro not skill based and you know the guy he was interviewing was like well just like fitness in general like think about how much a tour pro walks like walking is a natural motion that a lot of us have gotten away from like we don't have to walk we don't have to walk that many places you know like unless you go out and walk at night for like weight loss or just fun, or you just yeah. need to go for walks. Like where are we walking? You know, like not many people walk That's you live in the city. Like That's a good people thing. walk the golf course now, like they're walking miles upon miles a day, a week. And that's just the, you know, it gives you great posture. You have great awareness of your core. Like you're up straight and that all plays into golf. Like, you know, the rounded shoulders in golf, and then you got the rounded back. You know, I know I know, Gankis kind of preaches that, you know, get in an athletic, unathletic motion yeah. so that you can, you know, get yourself into certain positions. That's a whole other talk itself. But that, like, think about that, dude. Like, think about how much we don't walk and how much they do walk and how much that truly plays into, you know, everything. Right double whammy too because if you're not walking you're sitting like you know what i mean so instead yeah. of doing something that's good for you you're doing something that's bad for you right yeah, yeah. that's why i love to walk when i can uh it's kind of tough to film and walk the golf course tried that a bunch but um yeah, yeah. you know that's just that that was kind of eye-opening to think like damn they do walk so so much and how much that's just like helpful you know yeah. I mean, golf is a great weight loss tool. You know, walking. Uh, let's see, I got, I think I have that in my book over here. Oh, I knocked that thing over, bro. I swear to God. I'd love to see it just fall on me. That'd be funny. So this is a great book. Anatomy, Stretching, and Training for Golfers. Bro, I love this book. Uh, Dr. Philip Striano. But, okay, here we go. So, surprise. Go golf does have some physical benefits. But da -da -da -da. Regardless if you carry your bag for 18 holes, riding a car, you'll burn calories. Uh, an average-sized man carrying his golf bag for 18 holes will burn approximately 1,400 calories. Walking holes with a caddy, carrying your bag, about 1,200. And just playing golf while riding in a car is 800 calories. So uh, what's the average size, man? What is it if you're not average size? I, I feel like I need to know that. I don't know. You can do your own case study because we're both under average. So maybe we should track our <laughs> stats. And then maybe you should just hop on my shoulders. What do you think homie's burning for calories, bro? <laughs> he looks like he's burning a crack pipe. But, oh, look at these steezy kicks. Oh, shoot! Oh, shoot! What are those things called where it rips over the lace? Oh, and then, then them wingtip goofies, dude. That's sick. Those are like some Air Force Ones with some tongues on them. <laughs> you imagine if you just had Air Force Ones on? That'd be pretty steezy. But... So that just goes to show, man, like, I remember doing a project on that in high school, like how impactful golf can be for weight loss or just, you know, it's, it's so helpful for many things. Just get outside, out in the open, the bird, the sun, sadly for you, the snow. Yep. It's actually not snowing. It actually looks pretty nice out today. Let's check what the Ooh. temperature is. 
up here in beautiful northern New York. Oh, 16 degrees. Looks warm, it's not. <laughs> that is sick. You got to bring that to the house. You like that? Zeb, Zag, or Bellamy and I used to rock these, bro. I am the captain now. I like this. This might be my new thing for the pod. This fits in right with our last pro- podcast. Oh. Golf news article 50 minutes ago was published. How much should average golfers care about distance? Mm. It's the caption. That's what we all – it's what we said, bro. It's yeah. all – yeah. What we said. Everything's important, essentially. I mean, there's no arguing that. Yeah, like. Um, is, I think the biggest thing, though, to to point out quickly is, I uh, people easily forget. It's like distance is like the whipped cream on the cake, or something like that. No, I mean like mm-hmm. you gotta be able to control it before you can hit it far, or else you're just hitting it far everywhere. So like the big thing when you see pros hitting it super far, it's because they already are in control of where they're hitting it. So then for them, it's like, all right, the next way for me to improve is distance. Whereas for us, yeah, most bro. amateurs can't even hit it and find the fairway yeah. only 5% of the time anyway. Yeah. So distance isn't really helping at all. That's so true, man. Like I love, like we don't think about it enough. A lot of times, even I'm guilty of this too, like comparing ourselves to a tour pro like what we see on tv like they show us the highlights you know like why why yeah. you know we always see oh like look how close he's hitting there look at that you know the putt he made or the chip like they're not showing us the ones that he he does miss the green yeah they're not showing missed cuts like very rarely we do see that but then it goes into like how much they truly practice like think about someone that works a nine to five job like like, tour pros are – it's, like, 24-7 for them. Oh, yeah, dude. I, Go ahead. Perfect. I just saw a thing with Kevin Kisner where he, like, bet his buddy or something. One of his buddy was like, you're so lucky. You, you're a tour pro, easiest job in the world. And then he, he was like, all right, come try it out. See how you like it. Whatever. This guy's got, like, a normal job. So, Kisner's like, yeah, come on out. I bet you won't even last a week. And he's like, first day I got up at, like, 4.30 or something, like, did Where all, you see this? Is this a video? Yeah, I, it might. I don't know. It's not on Instagram. It might have been like a foreplay thing. Mm. But then he was like, "Yeah, like woke up at four thirty, made him get up with me. He's like, I stretched, whatever, worked out, ate breakfast, did some golf stuff, like practice. Maybe he did like a comp, press conference or something. Played his practice round, got done, had to sign, do a charity thing, like blah 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 blah. Before you know it, it's." 10 o'clock and then he's like all right like i'm exhausted i'm going to bed and then it's the same thing in the morning the next morning pretty much and he's like he had his buddy come on like a monday and the guy made it to like midday wednesday and was just like all right man i'm gonna head home like yeah that's wild like it's not a nine to five man it's way more than that yeah dude it goes right into like you said you need to be able to control it before you hit it far like that's why i love seeing a pro like go after one really you know like put 100 percent in the tank you know you talk to any pro they're not hitting the golf ball at 100 percent each swing like they're saving their back they're saving their energy they're hitting it as far as they need to but if they got to step on one get to a short par four or you know make a corner on a par five or something but that's so cool because they can they can really turn it on their mechanics don't waver much you know they might mm-hmm. they might you know, centimeter difference in where they're hitting it on the face because they're swinging so much faster. But I mean, look how hard Bryson's hitting it, and he's still that's still not how hard he swings. Like, like we've talked about, he just programmed himself for his now his normal is like what his old all yeah. out would be. So now he like just has another tier. So you know, he's carrying the ball three forty, bro. Like how you know it's possible. Oh, yeah. And then I think another thing you want that's important that a lot of people don't understand is, like, I feel like there's such a concept and, like, a stigma of, like, they're 
they don't make mistakes. They like hit, you have to hit everything perfect. Like I know when I was a kid trying to play golf, I was like, would get upset. I'm like 12 years old, just getting pissed off. Cause I think I'm like, Oh, the shot has to be perfect. I have to make hit every shot. Perfect. Blah, blah, blah. Like, and you don't at all. Mm. And the quicker you realize that the better for sure. But I do think there is so, I mean, there is just such a stigma of like, they hit every shot perfect. They don't. Their bad shots are just a lot, a lot better than ours. Mm -hmm. But th there's nothing perfect about it. And you don't have to be mechanically perfect. You don't have to be mentally perfect. Like you, there's no perfect golf swing and there's no perfect golf shot. There's just your best shot and your best swing. And you have to be able to be comfortable doing that and improving that. But don't get so focused on perfect. That's so true, bro. Like, that's another piece of it. Regardless of the fitness and the time they put in, think about the focus. Like, when was the last time you have focused 100% on, like, a full 18 holes of golf? I, I've never done it, ever. There's no shot. I, I can remember really one time. Yep. And it was a junior tour event at Partridge Run, like my junior year summer. And I had just talked with like Zach Mead or something about like really like focusing and like picking out where I wanted to hit shots and like the smart places to go into greens and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I probably played, I just remember it so well because it felt so cool. I think it was my first competitive golf under round, under par, competitive golf round under par. Um, I shot like 70. But it was like, and it felt so easy. And it was like, I was just dialed in on like, every shot was just, all right, I know where I want to hit the green. I'm going to start at the middle of the green. And if it works back to that flag, like considering the wind, whatever, go boom. And I just did it. And I just did it. And I did it all day long. And I never for a second thought in my head, like, because we all have those thoughts of like, so, something's going to go wrong. You know what I mean? Like, this is too good. Something's going to go wrong. Um, never had that. and But, yeah, that, I mean, that's one that I can really remember well where I was like, yeah, I, I really – it was like a new level of yep. focus and mental grind that I hadn't had before. That's, that's just a huge thing to them, the pros, is having that mental clarity and just focus on their goal. Like, think about – you know, how many people we've probably played in front of before, whether it be at a junior or a college tournament or something like, you know, we've hit some pretty cool shots on mm -hmm. opening tees with some people like that's, that's awesome. They're doing that, you know, 10 X, almost hundred X that, and mm -hmm. then have to be playing for hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions. And then they truly just want to win also. So all those different little pressures, you know, they have the sports psychologists, they have the, the mental coaches, they have the physical and the fitness coaches and then the swing coaches. Like people really have to understand what their goals are in the game and, and be very open and just observant of that. Like, okay, this is yeah. my golf on the weekends for a release from my nine to five job. I, you know, I, I play little mini tour events. I, you know, I'm a college golfer, I high school golf. Like, you got to narrow in what your goals are inside yeah. the game. And I think that'll, that'll definitely alleviate some pressure, some, you know, just unwanted like mental issues in the game. I think, you know, I've started to really realize why I play and really be grateful for each time I'm out there. And that that's, that's truly changed my perspective for my day to day life, not only, but while on the course too, bro. Like, you can, you can get away with some bogeys and still be all right. You know, I used to almost collapse right after my first bogey. And it's like, mm -hmm. dude, you can, like, birdies are out there just like the bogeys are, you know, depending on the skill level of golfer you are. But, like, exactly. you know, you can shoot – you can have five bogeys and, you know, there's so seven – 70s, you know. Like, that's, that's what blows my mind. But I think uh, – Another another solid solid talk, my dude. Takeaways from today. 
I like the last thing we talked about about kind of knowing your game and not uh, not freaking out. Yeah. No, I know your apps. Yep. Um, I, I think really be discipl- discipline yourself in the sense of getting angry too. Like a lot of times, like you'll see people that don't practice get angry that they're playing bad. It's like, dude, you haven't done anything to yeah. help yourself. I mean, sometimes I'll get angry and I'll, I got to do a self check and be like, all right, man, you haven't been practicing enough. You're slacking. You know what I mean? Like you get out what you put in truly. And if you're a guy that plays on the weekends and you're getting mad at yourself and discouraged, don't, you know, or find something else to do, I guess. Like, d- don't put yourself through that, but absolutely don't, uh, do not get mad if you don't have a right to be mad. That's kind of the way I look at it. All right, brother. Another solid episode we got here. Some great takeaways. Know your why inside the game. That's probably the title. Um, but yeah, man, another solid talk. Back at it again next week. Follow my, mine and Brandon's TikTok and Instagram pages. Yeah, plug that. You know to plug that. Plug that in the show description. Plug. Yep. All right, baby. All right, deuces.